Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're going to be doing the kinetic section of the 2024 USNCO local exam. So this is from questions 25 through 30. Let's start with question 25. Ethanol is oxidized to acetaldehyde by dichromate ions in acidic solution according to the following equation. If the concentration of chromium uh, ions is increasing at a rate of 0.18 moles per second, at what rate is the concentration of acetaldehyde changing? This is a pretty simple stoichiometric uh, question. So we know that the ratio between the acetaldehyde and the chromate ion is three over two. Um, and you know that the rate, uh, the rate at which the chromium ion is increasing is 0 0.18, 0 0.18. So the, the rate at which the concentration of your acetaldehyde is changing is three halves times 0.18, which is 0 0.27 moles per second. Uh, a molar per second and it would be increasing since it is a product that's being formed uh, so your answer is answer choice b let's move on to question 26 a reaction and the gas phase doubles in rate on increasing the temperature from 10 degrees celsius to 20 degrees celsius which is the best explanation for the increase in reaction rate you might have heard uh, about this simple like rule of thumb that for every 10 degrees that you increase um, the uh, the temperature by a reaction will double in rate. Um, so let's go through our answer choices and see what can explain this change. A says that the pressure doubles, but according to uh, the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, pressure is directly proportional, uh, pressure is directly proportional to temperature. And this is going to be the absolute temperature. So while in, the, in Celsius you double your temperature, if you look at the absolute temperature, which is going to be 283 Kelvin and 293 Kelvin, you notice that the pressure is only going to uh, increase by a factor of 293 over 283. And this is not doubling. Therefore, our answer cannot be answer choice A. Now let's look at answer choice B. The number of particles above a minimum activation energy doubles. Now, this is going to be explained by your Arrhenius uh, equation, which says that K, uh, K, which is your reaction rate, or uh, reaction constant, is equal to A times E to the minus EA over RT, uh, where A is your prefactor, it's a constant, and EA is your activation energy, and obviously T is your temperature. Generally, the rate of anything can be simplified into the number of uh, attempts at times the rate of success. And this equation kind of exemplifies that. A is going to be your uh, rate of attempts, attempts, and this the this E uh, term defines your rate of success, and the rate of success is based on your temperature, and it's also based on your activation energy. So remember, the answer choice says that the number of particles above a minimum activation energy doubles. It's really referring to this term, which is the rate of success. So K2 over K1 can be defined as uh, E to the minus EA over RT2 over E to the minus EA over RT1. Now with some algebra, you can uh, simplify this to uh, E to the EA over RT times T1 minus T2. And this will give you your the factor by which your reaction will change. Now, you have a T1 minus T2 term, but what you also have is the EA term. The activation energy is going to be a degree of freedom that allows us to justify why it would double. Uh, because T1 and 2 are fixed, so it's not like the pressure situation where it's going to increase by a given factor. Um, in this case, you can change your activation energy so that this entire value becomes 2. So B looks like a promising uh, answer choice, but let's make sure that C and D are wrong. C says that the average kinetic energy of the molecules doubles. Now, the average kinetic energy of a gas phase is defined by the equation E is equal to 3 halves R, time, R over Na, which is Avogadro's number, times T. Now, you can see, again, that the energy is proportional to temperature only. R is a constant, N is a constant. So the only degree of freedom you have is your temperature. And as we saw from the pressure uh, instance, um, this is absolute temperature. So your, your temperature is not increasing by a factor of two. Therefore, your average kinetic energy is also not increasing by a factor of two, 
which means that C is wrong. D says that the number of collisions per unit time doubles. This is also wrong. Uh, the number of collisions is a function of time or uh, temperature, and it scales by a factor of the square root of time. So if you did Z2 over Z1, which is the number of collisions uh, at, the, at the 20 degrees over the, the collisions at 10 degrees, you'll notice that it's gonna be a square root of T2 over T1, uh, which if you plug in your values comes out to about 1.018. So this is nowhere near two uh, because the number of collisions scales as a factor of the square root of temperature. So D is also wrong. Uh, and therefore, the correct answer is answer choice B. Let's move on to question 27. An irreversible reaction occurs as follows. What is the rate law of this reaction? Now, your first instinct might be to just do the obvious, which is like rate is equal to K times the concentration of A squared. And then B, you know, you follow the coefficients that you're given and turn them into exponents. But this is actually wrong. Uh, you don't know the mechanism of this reaction, and this reaction is a tertiary reaction, meaning three molecules have to simultaneously collide. That is not very frequent. And in fact, this reaction would not run like this. It would run as a series of elementary reactions. And based on whichever elementary reaction is your slow step, that's gonna define the rate law of the overall reaction. So you actually cannot determine the rate law for this reaction given uh, the, the given just this information. So your answer is answer choice D. Let's move on to question 28. The half-life of SR90 is uh, 28 years. How long is required for the level of reactivity to drop to 1.5% of its initial value? Since we're dealing with radioactive decay, we know that this is going to be a first order reaction. Um, that's always true. A radioactive decay is always first order. So your integrated rate law is gonna be that the natural log of the concentration at some time t uh, over the concentration initial is equal to minus kt, where k is defined uh, by your half-life, so it's ln2 over k. So you can find out k based on your half-life, which we are given. So let's quickly find k. So k is going to be ln of 2 over the half-life, which is 28 years. And if you do out the math, you get that k is equal to 0 0.0248 uh, per year. That's your units. So all we have to do now is uh, solve for time in this integrated rate law. So we can say that our initial concentration is 1. That's just going to be for simplicity uh, because all we really care about is how the initial concentration relates to uh, the concentration when it's 1.5% of the initial concentration. So your, con your concentration at some time t is going to be 0 0.015. So ln of 0 0.015 over 1 is equal to minus k, which we determined to be 0 0.0248 per year times time. Now all that's left is to solve for time. So that's going to be ln of 0 0.0015 divided by negative 0 0.0248. Um, so your time is 169 years, uh, which is about 170 years, uh, which is the correct answer years. Uh, answer choice D is your correct answer. Let's move on to question 29. An uncatalyzed reaction has an activation energy uh, of 50 kilojoules per mole and an enth enthalpy change of negative 10 kilojoules per mole. In the presence of a catalyst, what might these values become? Now in an energy diagram, you can plot out your uh, enthalpy and your activation energy. So if you uh, plot energy versus time, you can say that your reactants start up here and your products are down here. This is because we're told that our change in enthalpy is negative 10 kilojoules per mole. So the energy overall goes down. Now your activation energy is defined by the shape of this curve. So the, at the peak of your energy, um, if you draw the energy there and you take the difference between the energy at the start, 
that's going to define your activation energy. Now, how does a catalyst change this uh, energy diagram? Well, a catalyst, all it does is change the activation energy. Now, it could take a different pathway, as in like this, or it could do something different where it you know, makes another uh, intermediate product and then goes down to the actual product. Whatever it does, there are certain things that do not change, such as the change in enthalpy. What can change, however, is the activation energy. A catalyst will make the activation energy lower so that the reaction can occur faster. That's the whole point of a catalyst. So we're looking for an EA value that is less than the EA value that we're given initially without in the uncatalyzed reaction. And we're looking to maintain the change in enthalpy. And the only one that does that is answer choice A. Your activation energy is 30 instead of the 50, but your enthalpy, your change in enthalpy uh, remains the same. Therefore, your answer is answer choice A. Let's move on to the last question, question 30. Chlorine gas catalyzes the gas phase decomposition of nitrous oxide according to the equation this. Uh, the following mechanism is proposed for the catalyzed reaction. What rate law is predicted by this mechanism? Now, whenever you're given a mechanism, the overall rate of your reaction is going to be defined by the slowest step. So if we can write the, the uh, rate law of the slow step, then we can determine the rate of the overall reaction. Now, since this is an elementary reaction, we can write the rate law uh, pretty normally. So the rate is going to be uh, some constant, let's call it K1, times the concentration of chlorine times the concentration of N2O uh, from the, the slow step here. Now, there is a problem. Chlorine, the concentration of chlorine shows up in our rate law, but it doesn't show up in the overall uh, reaction. So that means that our rate law can't have chlorine in it. Now, how do we get rid of chlorine? Well, we can use the uh, equilibrium, the fast equilibrium step. Remember that this reaction is being catalyzed by a chlorine gas. So to both sides of the reaction, you can actually add uh, chlorine gas. So 2N2O plus the chlorine gas reacts to form 2N2 plus O2 plus Cl2. Now, uh, it, it eventually gets canceled out in the uh, reaction, but remember on the reactant side and the product side, there is chlorine gas, it, it's a catalyst. Therefore, in your overall uh, rate law, you can have the concentration of chlorine gas. Um, and we're gonna use that. So if you look at the fast equilibrium step, the whole idea be behind equilibrium is that the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So this is gonna allow us to interchange the concentrations or solve for the concentration of chlorine gas in terms of uh, just the Cl. So what do I mean? The rate of the forward reaction is going to be some constant, let's call it K2, times the concentration of Cl2, um, and that's gonna be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, which we can say is some constant K3, times the concentration of chlorine squared. Now, we can use these, uh, use this equation to solve for uh, chlorine, the concentration of chlorine as a function of uh, Cl gas. So Cl is gonna be equal to uh, K2 over K3 times Cl2, uh, and all this is in a square root. So you can actually uh, take a lot of this out. You can say that the concentration of Cl is equal to the square root of K2 over K3, which we can call K4, uh, and the Cl2 gets a exponent of 1 half. So now that we know this, we can plug it back into the rate law that we had for the slow step. So now it's become K1 uh, times the concentration of Cl, which we just determined to be K4 times Cl2 to the 1 half, uh, and then times the concentration of N2O. We can simplify this by saying that K1 times K4, since they're both constants, is a constant, we'll call it K, um, and we can bring everything else down. So chlorine gas to the 1 half times N2O, um, and that's your final rate law. Uh, it's become a little messy, but the answer is answer choice D. And that was the kinetic section of the 2024 USNCO local exam. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope you're able to learn something. Please consider leaving a like and subscribing, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.